LookScore is refreshing rendered image progressively. You can choose how often it will happen by changing the refresh interval in the display settings section. In LookScore viewport setting you have a little bit more option to choose from. Viewport hold time describe how long viewport will be rendered. Scenes with a lot of bounces usually would require a little bit longer time to render reliable preview. If you have enabled denoising, it will be applied at the end of the rendering. Advanced tab allows you to enhance the speed of viewport rendering. Reduce first sample resolution will produce the first lower resolution image allowing to give immediate preview. It is very useful if you are moving camera a lot. Higher block size value will allow you to get a better viewport response. Set it to your taste as there is no good setting and everything will depend on your scene, hardware and personal preferences. Pixel size setting can be very handy for the people working on high resolution monitors. If you set value 1, every screen pixel will have one rendered pixel assigned. If the value will be 4, every 4 screen pixels will share one rendered pixel. It allows you to render less pixels which will affect in having a faster preview. If you choose in pixel filter, linear over the near option, your viewport rendering will be smoother. You can choose between GPU and CPU to render previews, but it is strongly recommended to use CPU. Some of the options I just have talked about are not accessible when using bidirectional path tracing. If you want to speed up response time and you are using this method, you can simply uncheck it for viewport rendering. Remember that it can influence the results. LookScore error log is your personal assistant that will point out every encountered problem. It is very useful when using cycle setups as it is showing incompatibilities immediately. LookScore will never stop rendering until it will meet halt conditions. These three options will give you control over the rendering. First it's pretty straightforward as it is just the time of the rendering. After a given number of seconds render will stop automatically. You can use the use samples option that will behave the same way as in the first example using samples instead of the seconds. Use noise threshold works differently and it is quality based halt condition. When this option is enabled, engine will constantly test the image quality. When noise will be low enough, rendering will be stopped. Noise threshold works like the tolerance. If the value is set high, rendering will be stopped when the image is still noisy. Lowering the value will allow lower noise levels. Warm-up samples and test step samples work the same way as adaptive strength map creation in Sobo and Random Sampler. Warm-up samples is the number that will be used as a buffer after the rendering start. When warm-up samples will pass, the engine will start to count down test step samples before the first quality check. Test will be repeated every given value until it will reach the desired quality. Using the noise threshold will give you consistent quality over the whole animation. It can also save you some rendering time. Don't set up threshold too low as very low values are hard to reach and it is not needed especially when you are denoising the image. If you need you can mix halt conditions. The rendering will stop when the first condition will be met. Leave me the feedback in comments or simply push the like button. Now let's take a look at Photon GI Cache section.